communion message this morning, I'll begin with 2 Chronicles 2012. Oh, our God, will you not execute judgment upon them? For we are powerless. We are powerless against this great multitude that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Amen. More about that in just a few moments. And our gospel is Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. God, I ask in your name, be with us in a special way at the communion table and at our receiving of this sacrament. Be with us this morning in hearing your word. Change our lives where they need to be changed. It's in your name we pray to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The title of our message this morning is Ites and More Ites. It comes from 2 Chronicles 20 which is what our Bible study with Epworth United Methodist Church is going to be on this Wednesday night. The chapter begins this way. After this, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and with them some of the Meunites came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Jehoshaphat and the nation of Judah were facing overwhelming odds. They it looked like they didn't stand a chance. Definitely an only God situation. God, only you can help us in this mess. Perhaps you can relate this morning. Maybe you have, you are, or you will be facing a situation like that where it's just so overwhelming. Maybe you're facing something like that in your life. I know our what our nation is facing right now. COVID-19, increasing violence, and an extremely contentious election Amen. that is ahead of us. Verse 12 does a great job of describing the mess they are in. O oh, our God, we do not execute judgment upon them, for we are powerless against this great multitude that is coming against us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. First point I want to say, really only two points this morning. This is a communion meditation. The title again of our Wednesday Bible study is Praying in a Tight Spot. One of the first things that Jehoshaphat does, this is an excellent chapter in the Bible for Bible study because Jehoshaphat knows he's overwhelmed, but the first thing he does is he worships and prays. 
My wife has many plaques, Gwen has many plaques, but the one I want to mention this morning is a beautiful one which says, don't tell God how big your problem is, tell your problem how big your God is. <laughs> and that's what Jehoshaphat does. 20 verse 6. O oh Lord, God of our ancestors, are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? In your hand are power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. Joseph is also clear how much they need God's help. He, he does actually tell them how big the problem is. But God knows. For 2 Chronicles 2017, which is smack dab in the middle of what we call the Old Testament. It's the middle of the Old Testament. 2017, God tells them, hey, this is my battle. And I'm going to be with you. By the grace of God, more on Wednesday night. Amen? In tight spots, worship God. Talk to God. Pray to God. And this passage gives us some great pointers and principles in our prayer life. Amen. Secondly, in our gospel today, God doesn't want us just to talk to Him. God wants us to talk with each other. Directly. Not about, but to. And in fact, there's great power in doing so. Again, truly, I tell you, too, you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered, gathered in my name, I am there among them. God wants us to work things out. Amen? Amen. Two sons were left a large piece of property by their dad. For months, they fought over how the property would be divided. Finally, they brought their problem to the rabbi. The rabbi said, come back tomorrow. And the rabbi said, here's your solution. He said, I'm going to flip a coin. One of you call it in the air. And the one who picks right will divide the land. The one who said, that won't solve anything. And the rabbi said, oh, no. He said, the one will divide the land. And then the next brother will choose which he wants. <laughs> Two wise sayings. Conflict cannot continue without your participation. Sometimes God doesn't want you into a, doesn't send you in a battle to win, to win it. God sends you to end it. In 1939, as the Nazis were moving into the Netherlands, a Dutch theologian, Henry Kramer, was asked by a, Christ, a group of Christian lay people, our Jewish neighbors are disappearing from their homes. What must we do? Kramer answered, I cannot tell you what to do. I can tell you who you are. If you know who you are, you will know what to do. If you know who you are, you will know what to do. These persons became a part of the Dutch resistance movement. If we remember who we are, if we remember who our God is, and that we are God's people, this will determine and define our conduct and personal relationships. Who are we as Christian people? Who are we? I recently just received an excellent letter from Charles Stanley. Sends out a monthly letter. Charles Stanley says, this is from the Bible, there's three things we are as Christians. Number one, we're justified. When you said Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, Justified, just as if I never sinned. That's what justified means. It means your sins are forgiven, not because of you, but because of Jesus. 
dying on the cross for your sins. Thank you, Lord. Look, who are we? We're justified by Jesus. Second thing, we're sanctified. This is an ongoing process. It means we're made holy. It means we're changed. It means we're different now. It's a lifelong process. The bottom line of sanctification is God helps us to do the right thing. Even sometimes when we're kicking and screaming against it. Sanctification. We're new in Jesus. He helps us to do the right thing. And then the third thing is glorification. There's a glory that awaits us. All because we made a decision to be a part of God and what He's doing and what He's done in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And it always comes down to this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Amen. And He does based on what Jesus there's two points to the message today. It's very helpful, number one. It's very helpful to talk to God. It's also very helpful to talk to each other. Amen? We're touring you three of you agree on anything, or that will be done for you by my Father in heaven. If two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of that. You know, when I was a little kid, I go to these weeknight church meetings and it'd just be a few of us. I loved it as a kid. I just felt so close to something that God was doing. I conclude. We conclude. We commence. It's a better way to put it. I pray for a new beginning. A Christian leader, his name was Jim Wallace, was traveling in South Africa in the late 1980s. It was 1987, actually, exactly. Nelson Mandela was still in prison. There was so much chaos and confusion and killing going on in the country. Jim Wallace met a 14-year-old boy who was doing organizing. And a lot of what happened in South Africa came through young people <clears throat> demonstrating and stepping out in faith. Jim Wallace asked this young boy, are you optimistic about the future? And again, this was, Nelson Mandela was still in prison, not yet the president of the country. And apartheid was very much still going on. And there was terrible violence. The boy said, absolutely, I am optimistic for the future. Jim Law said, do you think there will be a new free South Africa? Immediately the young boy said, I will see 14-year-old kid said, I will see to it personally. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of commitment that we need to make to Jesus. I want you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me a sin. Lord Jesus, I, I want to be a part of you in what you're doing. Which, by the way, will not bow to any it's God and country, not country and God. Amen. And you don't take that and bow before a candidate. It's God and country, not country and God. We all need to bow before him. I shall see to it personally, he said. That's the kind of commitment Jesus calls for us. But the church is more than that. The church is the place where I will see to it.
do it personally comes, becomes, we will see to it together. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, help us to come to your table where two or three are gathered in my name. You are in our midst. Lord, just as popped in my head to my grandfather who would give a ride to the polls to somebody who he knew was voting in an opposite way. Lord, help us to see things that we can see to it together in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As a people who are justified, sanctified, and glorified. We bow before you this morning. We bow before you online and pray, may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.